Richard, I understand that you played a role in the funeral procession for President John F. Kennedy. Tell me how all of that came about. Well, at the time I was stationed at Fort Myer, Virginia, there at Arlington National Cemetery, and uh, we were uh, out exercising the horses and stuff the day that that the uh, incident happened, and we got received word to report back to our section, the caisson section here at the stables. And so we reported back, and uh, first of all, we just heard that he had been shot. Right. And later we got the word that he had passed away. And from then on, we were on hold. We were um, kind of up in the air as what exactly we were supposed to do and what we were going to do. Uh, but when the word came down that we would be participating in a uh, funeral ceremony for the uh, president, and then we got busy and got things ready. Uh, normally we, you know, what we normally did, because that's what I did there at uh, Arlington National Cemetery, I participated in full honor uh, funerals at, at uh, Arlington National Cemetery while I was stationed there. Uh, our first, uh, encounter with uh, was the uh, day after he arrived back into the Washington DC area and then they laid in at uh, for a private viewing at the uh, at the White House and we went up the uh, next day and escorted the body from from the White House to the Capitol building where it laid in state in the rotunda how old were you at that time I was 22 you were 22 22 years old Richard how difficult was you was it for you rather at that young age to be doing even though this was your duty to be doing this duty in service to the president i i had i had been uh, doing the, those kind of ceremonies for for over a year and at that time would i'd probably participated in several hundred there in arlington so i don't think there was a any any more pressure on me to uh to, to perform and do what I was supposed to do than there was at any other ceremony because I always was deeply, deeply respectful to those persons who we were honoring at that time. So I didn't uh, feel anything or any way additional pressure or anything, even though, even though it was a long, long ceremony. It started real early in the morning, you know, before daylight because we had to ride from the stables and go across the Potomac River into downtown D.C. and then back. Uh, when you're performing this ceremony and doing this duty that you've done before, do you notice the tone of the people around you or are you strictly focused upon what <coughs> you're doing? Because obviously this nation was in an uproar. There mm -hmm. was terrible grief and sadness going on. Did you sense any of that? I, I did sense that, but uh, I think the, uh, the ceremony itself or the procession itself uh, the day of the actual funeral, uh, it was the uh, persons lining the uh, the, the route, uh, which I they were a, a lot of them. All right, they it was really quiet. They were you know like almost silent. You know there was no applauding, no, uh, and I, uh, along with my uh, fellow soldiers, I believe we were pretty well had tunnel vision, you know, kept eyes and head straight to the front. I would glance around once in a while, but you know, it was almost tunnel vision. When you got the news that it was going to be the president and, and the news mm -hmm. began to came out, among your the guys that you worked with, was there a sense of just shock over that? Was there a sense of of a sense of, of we must do our best duty mm -hmm. over this situation because it is our president? I believe that there was a little, there was more effort and more concern that uh, to ensure that uh, w that we did exactly what we were supposed to do. We weren't given any specific orders or anything, you know. Just do it the best you can. We had a little time to prepare for it. Uh, you know, I, d I don't think there was any uh, really pressure mm -hmm. for us to do anything other than do your job. You you did the procession mm -hmm. down 
And, and where did your part of the duty end? When you came to the cemetery at Arlington? After we uh, arrived at the grave site at, at Arlington and the casket was unloaded from the caisson, then we departed the grave site and returned to the back to the stable area, our stables. Did any of you, you or any of you guys with you, did they, did they have any emotional effect after it was all over with? Did they cry? Did they break down? Did they, did they say or feel anything afterwards? If they did, I'm not aware of it. And uh, no, like I say, we, we had, at that time, we had basically gone through that, the same thing, only this was a lot longer and a lot, a lot, uh, wore on us a lot more because it was from daylight till after dark when we got done that the final day. It was a very, very long day. Besides your duty in, 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 in caring for the president in this way, as a young man in the 1960s at 20 some odd years old, what did that moment in time do for you and what do you think it did for our country? Well, first, eight, when it kind of, when it really set in, you know, that what had actually happened and what was going on around us and everything, you know, you know, how could this happen, you know? How could this possibly happen in the United States of America, you know? Uh, it was, you know, he was my commander in chief. Not that I, you know, was for or against anything that he did or, or would do, but he was my commander in chief. And I owed him that respect and that honor. And I think, uh, I, I did, I did, I don't know about the other guys. We didn't talk about it a lot or very much, but I did. After when I was leaving the grave site and they were playing taps, it the tears came, which wasn't the first time. There were several ceremonies that I participated in. That it was, seemed like something about taps being played that that brings it out, you know. So, so when you look back on that time, and you look back on your part in history, what do you think about all of that? I I can't really say what I really think about it, you know, honestly. Uh, it was just, I did my job, that's that's all I can say, you know, it was my job, I was chose to do it, and uh, I, I, I don't know if I was thankful, all right? Mm -hmm. I was appreciative, mm -hmm. okay, but uh, it's something you never want to do. You never want to have to do something like that. It's a lot different. Uh, you, when you attend a funeral, do a funeral for somebody who ha that you know, all right, as you know, some soldier that passed away years ago or in, in a different war or whatever. It's, it's a lot different. It's, uh, it, it took a toll. It took a toll on all of us. Mm -hmm. So. Probably my last question for you, uh, at least I think my last question for you. Uh, what do you think we as a nation lost in that moment in time when we lost John Kennedy? Other than losing the president, I think that we lost a, uh, a, a lot of uh, forward movement or, uh, toward uh, bettering relations, uh, improving relationships with the, at that time we called them minorities, right? And your people, my people, you know, I think we lost a lot of ground when that happened. I honestly do. I think we took a few steps backwards again. And Are you proud of, of the part that you played? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wouldn't be sitting here if I wasn't. 